If you were a kid in the 1980s or 1990s, you were in one of two camps. Either you had one of these, or you wanted one. It's the Sony Watchman. Let's take a look. You're about to see the Me TV, the Sony Watchman, the first truly personal TV. The Sleepy TV, only about an inch thick, or is it thin? And one Watchman has an AM FM radio. The Referee TV. The Jolly TV, the one and only TV for the one and only you, the Sony Watchman TV. I'm pretty sure it was the same just about everywhere, but being able to have a television in your bedroom as a child of the 80s or 90s was a pretty big deal. Even having a 13-inch black and white television in your own bedroom puts you in cool status. Now you can take that to another level if your parents would have bought you one of these, the Sony Watchman. These were a 2-inch CRT television that fit in the palm of your hand. These were introduced in 1982 to great fanfare. It was something completely different, something that the market had never seen before. The ability to take motion pictures, moving images, on the road, on the go with you. Then later on, in the later 80s, Sony introduced the Mega Watchman, which was a bigger screen. This one, I believe, is four and a half inches, AM, FM radio, great sound. It even has an external antenna jack on it, so you could hook it up to your whole home antenna or even a VCR or a camera. So these were pretty revolutionary in their day. So let's take a little bit of time to look at each one of these in a little bit more detail. Now we'll actually start off by taking a look at this little guy here. This is the FD-10A, which was introduced in 1988. And it's pretty similar to the original model that was introduced in 1982. When these first came out, they sold for $169.99, which is quite a lot of money, but nobody else was really doing anything like this at the time. Uh, this is a fully portable, battery powered, takes four AA batteries, CRT TV that fit in the palm of your hands. It actually has a small CRT that fires this way that actually reflects off of that two inch screen to the viewer. Now these had full VHF and UHF capability for the analog broadcast channels of the time, which of course are long gone now that digital's around, but full controls on the side for tuning, power, volume, a switch on the back for VHF and UHF, an extra long antenna, and then an earphone jack on the side so you could actually listen privately. I mean, this was something that kids and adults both pined over back in the day. This was the ultimate portable viewer. There was really nothing else at the time that you could take with you in the car or on a bus or a train or just out to the park and actually be able to watch TV. So this was, this created quite a buzz. Now, if we fast forward a few years, Sony introduced the Mega Watchman in the late 1980s, and this was the big brother to the two inch Watchman that we just took a look at. These had a four, four and a half inch black and white CRT display on them, and were a little bit more versatile than what the smaller ones were. Now, when this came out, these sold for around $150, which is actually less than the small ones were when they came out. And by this time, the original style two inch models had dropped to just under $100, so quite a difference. And this was the one that if you were a teenager in the early 90s, this is what you wanted to have because not only did it have television capability, it also had AM, FM radio built into it as well. So if there wasn't anything on TV you wanted to watch, you could turn on the radio and listen to that. And it actually has a pretty nice, nice size speaker on the top. Uh, nice portable antenna, but the thing that really makes this one versatile is the fact that it has on the back, it has an external antenna input. So you could actually hook this one up to a VCR or to your, your uh, camera uh, and view the images on 
the screen. Now, I never had one of these when I was growing up. I had a generic version, and I used to actually hook our Atari and uh, Commodore 64 up to it just, just because I could. I mean, it, it wasn't very playable. But if we take a look at this one, it does have a full range of controls on the side, your AM, FM, and TV selector, uh, picture on and off, so you could actually listen to TV audio without the screen on, which would increase your battery life quite a bit. VHF and UHF capability on this one as well, tone adjustment, volume, your tuning knob, and on the back, you did have brightness and contrast controls and a vertical hold control too. Now, besides using a bunch of D cell batteries, looks like two, four, six, eight D cell batteries would run this for a couple of hours. You also have the ability to plug it into mains power with a, a regular figure eight power cord or even a DC adapter. So this thing could be used just about anywhere. Uh, these actually were available with a, a car cigarette lighter adapter. So you could take it on the road. And anybody that's ever had one of these and was super excited to take a portable TV on a car trip back in the 80s or 90s knows that the analog TV signal didn't work too well in a moving car. So it was kind of pointless unless you were stopped, but you still thought you were pretty cool with one of these in the back seat with you. The Sony Watchman brand actually enjoyed an 18-year life cycle from 1982 to the year 2000. Now, starting in the late 1980s, they introduced a color version with an LCD screen, which was something that was very revolutionary at the time. Home TVs and even computer monitors were still CRTs, so not only was it a color portable television, it was one with an LCD panel. Now, they produced over 65 different models of the Watchman, including all of the LCD color versions, the Mega Watchman, and the standard 2-inch black and white, and they were eventually phased out in the year 2000. Now, since then, analog broadcast television has been phased out, and digital rules the day, so these are pretty well useless in the modern world. There's, there's really nothing you can watch on them unless you connect an external source. So it's not something that I use every day or, or even every month, but it's something neat to get out every now and then just from a nostalgic point of view and take a look at and play around with. After all, it's something that I really wanted as a kid and I couldn't have one. Now I do. Hopefully in another video, we'll take a look at one of the LCD color versions of the Watchman. But for now, that's all I have. Do you have any memories of using one of these? Did you own one? Were you one of the super cool kids that uh, was able to afford one of these back in the day? If so, tell us about it. I want to know what you did with it. Where did you take it? Did you enjoy it? What did your friends think? And for all of the rest of us who didn't have one, what do you remember about it? Did you want one too? If you like this video, please be sure to like it and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And until next time, this has been the Vintage Electronics Channel. Have a great evening.